Coming up on Eyewitness News, carried to safety. I think I prayed the whole time I stood out there. I got him out of the house, but we couldn't get across the creek. Severe storms create potentially life-threatening conditions all across the area. I figured I'd be able to get back to the house, to the kids, and I couldn't get back to them. From harrowing rescues to washed out roads to those moments that make our hearts stop. Our cameras are there with team coverage in the places hardest hit by this powerful storm. West Virginia's source for news. Eyewitness News starts right now. We have exclusive coverage of dramatic rescues and fierce flooding. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Nareka. I'm Rick Lord. This is Eyewitness News. Severe weather puts Roan County under a state of emergency. That is our top story tonight. Rushing water made it difficult for this volunteer firefighter to get a young child to safety. You could see her almost falling during the rescue. That family was stranded when water surrounded their home. We have team coverage of widespread flooding and the response to it. Eyewitness News reporter Katie Brown is in Jackson County. Eyewitness News anchor Callie Cart and Dan Maddox are both in Roan County, which was arguably the hardest hit area and is currently under a state of emergency. Callie, we'll start with you with the very latest tonight. Well, and Rick, Roan County is the only county in West Virginia currently under a state of emergency. Officials say as they assess the damage, that may change. But again, Roan County, the only county under a state of emergency. And if you take a look behind me here at Spencer Middle School, you can see why this is the football field or what used to be the football field covered in water. And if, if you can imagine, it was much, much higher earlier in the day, actually several feet higher. It has gone down and this was the scene really throughout Spencer and the surrounding areas. Spencer, the hardest hit, but this was the scene throughout the county much of the day. So much, so many roads, homes and businesses damaged by this water. Uh, the 911 center even had to be evacuated and the EMS S Center actually lost an ambulance in this flood. There was also extensive damage to roads and bridges. Route 119 at Walton and Route 14 remain closed tonight. We did just wrap up a press conference updating us on the damage and on the cleanup efforts. A lot of agencies are here in Spencer. Homeland Security, 40 members of the National Guard. They are manning a, an emergency shelter. State police are also here along with other counties and of course the local agencies Agencies. They say it is some of the worst flooding they've seen in this area and cannot put a dollar amount on the damage just yet, but say the cleanup is just beginning. We want to assess what damage is out there. Uh, again, it's a multi-agency response. Uh, we're coming together with sharing of resources and cooperation on how to best, if you will, uh, confront the uh, damage and serve the people, get people restored back to uh, their natural way of uh, living. Now, miraculously, in all of this, there are no injuries or deaths to report, and that is amazing considering there were nine water rescues today. Eyewitness News reporter Bob Aaron was there as one amazing water rescue went down. The danger did not end even when firefighters arrived to help. Footing was treacherous. A woman firefighter led efforts to get three small children away from floodwaters. The rescue included the adults who had tried to save them earlier. The power of the water along West Virginia 36 in Looneyville was evident. The children went first. Earlier they were trapped in their home. They were cut off again on a piece of high ground halfway to safety along with the rescuers. Yeah, it was. I think I prayed the whole time I stood out there. <laughs> The, the neighbors had called. We, we was in the house watching a movie with the kids, and the neighbors had called and said, uh, you better go move your vehicles. And uh, I figured I'd be able to get back to the house to the kids, and I couldn't get back to them. The kids were placed in life jackets and carried to shore. The trip across the roaring water was scary for one woman who could not bring herself to look at what was happening. Family members and a neighbor got trapped after they moved the children to a tiny patch of safety. We got them out of the house, but then we couldn't get across the creek because we couldn't get across the creek right there. Others elsewhere needed help away from the flood. Firefighters had to rescue another man from knee-deep water in his house here in Walton, and the whole county had a bad case of you can't get there from here. About a half a dozen people were moved to safety in one rescue alone. In Roan County, Bob Aaron, Eyewitness News. 
Now, remarkably, everyone is safe tonight, but a lot of people, as you saw, they're forced from their homes and an emergency shelter has been set up to take care of that. We are going to bring in Eyewitness News reporter Dan Maddox now. He was at that emergency shelter and uh, he tells a little bit more about that. Well, Kelly, I was actually born and raised here in Roan County and growing up, you would see flooding, but not nothing to this scale. And that's exactly what everyone in this town is saying. So many people are displaced. Dozens of people are staying the night at the Red Cross shelter in the National Guard Armory here in Spencer. A lot of people there were forced out of Markop Manor. The water got up to 22 inches of the entire first floor of the apartment building. And the main concern is that everyone displaced is elderly. So the Red Cross is trying to take care of them best they can. Well, just like you say, you know, uh, go stay with them friends until we can get back in here and get things cleaned up and everything. All because I'll have a lot of remodeling to do and different things, but you know, just come in, clean up, and everything. Some of the residents are staying with friends and family, but a lot of people tonight are staying at that Red Cross shelter here in Spencer. And it's going to be a long cleanup process, and that shelter, we are told, will stay open. Uh, they don't have a time frame on that, but I, ideally until everyone is back home in there, er, at, be able to go back home. Uh, reporting live in Spencer, Callie Card, Eyewitness News. All right, Callie, thank you. All of that rain didn't just trap people in their homes. It also actually damaged a lot of homes. It certainly created quite a mess out there. Take a look. High water flooded and surrounded homes and cut all access to residents over a wide area of Roan County. Some houses had almost two feet of water inside, but others were luckier with floodwaters only lapping at the first floor and damaging air conditioning units and trailer skirts. Flooding around Walton was a combination of runoff and water from the Pocatalico River. And a lot of people we're stranded trying to find a way across the flooded roads. We cannot stress enough. Do not drive in that high water. Remember, ankle deep water can lift up your car and the water can be deeper than you think. And those fast moving floodwaters caused a creek behind the Roan County 911 Center to overflow, forcing the 911 Center to be evacuated. Eyewitness News reporter Katie Brown joins us now in Jackson County with the latest on the situation there. Katie. The flooding in Roan County definitely caused some problems, but when the 911 center also fell victim to the flooding, things could have been a lot worse. But luckily today, that wasn't the case. Around 11 this morning, Roan County 911 center was being evacuated due to high water, and neighboring counties stepped in to help. Kanawha County Metro sent a mobile command center, while Jackson County took care of Roan's emergency calls. It's a system emergency services say is a key to statewide operations. Yeah, throughout the entire state of West Virginia. That's the way we work. We operate. We help each other. And it's just like any disaster. We, you know, neighbors helping neighbors. And that's what it's all about. Reporting live in Jackson County, Katie Brown, Eyewitness News. Katie, thank you. Right now, crews are still assessing the damage to the Roan 911 Center, which is still closed. They are still operating out of that mobile trailer owned by Kanawha County. Their phone lines are still down as well, so they're using cell phones and radios to communicate. Jackson County is continuing to take their calls. Power outages are another problem. More than 100,000 customers in West Virginia were without electricity at the peak of the outages. And here is a look at the latest numbers for you. You can keep up to date with all of the outages by going to our website, WCHSTV.com. And if you have any video or pictures of damage in your area, we would love to see it. Go to WCHSTV.com and look for the See It, Shoot It, Send It link on the news page. You'll also be able to see pictures other people have sent in. And thank you for joining us on this Thursday evening. A meteorologist, Brandon Stover, as we were just talking about, had a mess this morning with some heavy rain, also some severe thunderstorms. Now, luckily for Roan County and much of the area that was in the flood warning earlier, a lot of these showers are weakening and pushing off towards the southeast. In fact, right now, Charleston is mostly dry. We'll zoom in to Nicholas County. We also had some wider problems there. It's not terribly heavy rain, though, and it's broken up. It's moving into the mountains as we speak. Also seeing some activity down in Logan County and Mingo County. But once again, no severe activity, nothing terribly heavy. That's some great news and also some great news. All watches and warnings have been discontinued. Although the flooding is pretty much done, there will be some high water along the Pocatowico River tonight in Sissonville. So beware of that. 
And as uh, Liz and Rick were just saying, do not cross any flooded roadways. It's simply not worth it. Let's take a look outside briefly. 70 degrees, dew points at 63. We're going to see a few showers early tonight, and then we're going to dry things out. Much cooler air, drier air for tomorrow. I'll have those details coming up in just a few minutes. Kanawha County deputies need your help tonight to find a man wanted in connection with a violent home invasion earlier this week in Kanawha County. Deputies are looking for this man, 19-year-old Tevin Christopher Williams. He is from Rand. He also goes by the name Smook. He is wanted for armed robbery at a home on a lane drive in Rand. If you have any information on this man's whereabouts, call the Kanawha County Sheriff's Office or 911. A tragic accident kills a man in Huntington. I witnessed news reporter Dara Wilcox joins us live with the latest details. Dara. Ricky, it happened at about 2 o'clock this afternoon in the driveway of a house on Ridgeway Road near Ritter Park in Huntington. Police tell us Saeed Hussein Hadi Sajaj was trying to stop a van in his driveway that they believe wasn't put into a parking gear when it ran over top of him. He was pronounced dead by the time emergency crews got on scene. Police say they believe the man was trying to prevent the van from going off the steep driveway and into a neighbor's home. It was a, a, not a normal accident. You know, it's one of those things that, that can happen but rarely ever happens. And we're told the man is a well-known doctor who retired from St. Mary's and many knew him as Dr. Hottie. Huntington Police continue to investigate the accident. Reporting live in Huntington, Dara Wilcox, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Dara. A legal fight over some midget football leagues may soon be over. Yeah, settlement could be coming. Lawyers representing the Midwestern and Western Generals met for several hours with attorneys working with the Mountain State Elite and Kanawha Valley Youth Football Leagues. The teams allege they were being discriminated against by not receiving full membership in the leagues, which would allow them to participate in the postseason. The teams are predominantly African American. However, an agreement has been reached in principle, which would make the teams full members of the Kanawha Valley Group. I think we actually came to the terms that we were reasonable for, for, for all involved. The uh, children will be playing football in an interleague play, and I think I think it was the, the bottom line goal is to get our youth involved, you know, our, our youth sports, and it's particularly on the west side, uh, uh, they will be engaged in a, in a full season. Lawyers on both sides say they hope to have all of the issues hammered out in a formal agreement before the start of the season in mid-August. And now we want to know what you think. Do you think that the teams should be included in the league? Just tell us what you think by stopping by our Facebook page and joining in on that conversation. We'll tell you where you can go to enjoy your wild side in a safe environment. That's coming up and this is Eyewitness News. And we can kick the severe and flooding threat to the curb. We got some drier and cooler air moving in. I'll have the details coming up next. And thank you for joining us on this Thursday evening. I'm meteorologist Brandon Stover. We got off to a very active start to the morning on this Thursday. We had heavy rain, also had some severe thunderstorm warnings. The good news, however, for the time being is that we're starting to dry things out, especially northbound here, and that's where the heavy rain fell. Generally light right along the Route 33 corridor in Roan County, Jackson County, but a lot of these showers are starting to shift off towards the south and east as we speak, and they're also lessening in intensity. Yeah, there's a little bit of yellow here near Summersville, but no how that orange kind of falls apart. So that is some great news here on uh, this late Thursday evening across uh, Fayette County and also Nicholas County, Webster County. That continues to slide off towards the south and east. Most of Charleston's dry. Can't run out a little drizzle, but outside of that, not too much going on. Also down towards uh, Pike County, Kentucky, Logan County, West Virginia. We're tracking a few spotty showers, but the moral of the story here is that none of that is severe. None of that is heavy. So that's some good news. Also good news is no watches and warnings. Those have been discontinued by the National Weather Service in Charleston. So things are starting to quiet things down uh, this late evening and towards overnight. Let's take a look outside right now. 70 degrees looking at the BB and T building flags whipping around a little bit because that front is moving through. Note the wind direction coming in out of the northwest ushering in that drier, cooler air. Dew point slowly starting to drop here. So eventually that dew point's going to drop into the 50s and that's going to feel very comfortable as we head towards tomorrow afternoon. 66 is our air temperature in Summersville right now. It is 56 on top of 
Uh, Snowshoe Mountain, 72 in Parkersburg, 76 in Portsmouth. Actually, a little bit of sun out here westbound, so that's allowing our temperatures to be a touch warmer further west you go. 75 in Hamlin, 74 in St. Albans. Here's your evening planner. Not too much going on, and that's uh, certainly some welcome news. 70 degrees at 7 p.m., scattered showers mostly east. As we head towards 9 p.m., we'll drop off to 67 with a spotty shower southeast and then perhaps some mountain drizzle late this evening. The moral of the story is the heavy rain, the severe weather threat is pushing off towards your east. And note the dew points. This tells us a lot, too. The front is clearly working its way through. When your dew points are up near 70 like they were yesterday, that's very muggy air mass. Now we've got dew points in the Buckeye State in the 50s. So that is drier, less stickier air. And that is heading our way overnight tonight and in towards tomorrow. There's that line of storms that came through. Pretty potent line that produced some wind damage in spots in the eastern part of the state. But that's kicking off to the northeastern coast. An unusually strong low pressure for this time of the year up near uh, New Jersey. That's sliding off towards the northeast overnight tonight. You tend to get a lot of sinking air behind these departing low pressures. So that's why I think most of tomorrow is dry. Less humid, 75 to 80 degrees. There is one small fly in the ointment, if you will. We have a weak disturbance dropping in from the north. That may kick off a spotty shower in the mountains given the low level moisture lingering. But outside of that, Really comfortable and dry. 57 for tonight, early shower drizzle. 78 tomorrow, spotty mountain shower. That's about it. Saturday, beautiful day. 82 degrees. Well, they'll see a lot of sunshine. Father's Day, warm front will bring some scattered showers around. Localized downpours early next week, but not too hot. And back to the big story of the day, Roan County under a state of emergency. We're told that there have been nine water rescues alone in Roan County today. Including one where half a dozen people had video after three kids were left in their home alone briefly as the adults tried to move cars out of the path of rising floodwaters. Then they couldn't get back. With the help of a neighbor, the family finally got those children out, but then the kids and their rescuers were trapped on a small island of high ground halfway to safety. Newton volunteer firefighters rigged a line and the tightrope like return to shore started with the kids first. When the first child was moved, a female firefighter lost her footing right there, both narrowly avoided being swept away. Terrifying for the children's mother. Eyewitness News anchor Callie Cart is live in the middle of it all in Spencer with the very latest tonight. Callie. Well, Rick, the Office of Emergency Management a director says what was amazing about this storm is that it stopped raining around 8 o'clock this morning. Then two hours later, around 10 o'clock, the water started rising and resulting in scenes like this here at the middle school. This is the football field completely underwater, but it has actually gone down several feet since the height. That, of course, created all of those water rescues that we saw, all of the damage to the roads and bridges, and also damages, damage to homes and businesses. We can tell you that authorities say some 50 people they estimate are displaced tonight, many of them in a makeshift shelter that has been set up at the National Guard Armory. About 40 members of the West Virginia National Guard are here in Spencer assisting really throughout Roan County assisting with this, this state of emergency. Also 1000 people are without power. Some of those people will have their lights back on. It is estimated around midnight tonight live in Spencer. Callie Card, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Callie. We'll take you to a place that puts the wild in wonderful West Virginia next on Eyewitness News. It's a thrill seekers paradise. Brad Rice takes us there. <laughs> sort of an idea of one of our owners. Uh, he saw these big bouncy toys and um, basically had a revelation. And it really has grown since then into icebergs and water slides and zip lines. So it's, it's quite the production now. The most popular activity is the blob launch. And it's basically when kids, one kid ends up on one end of the launch bag Another one ends up on the other and jumps down and then launches their buddy. So it's quite entertaining and uh, it's, it's, it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> There's an awesome beach for reading, hanging out, watching the kids, if, you know, if you're just ready to chill out. So it's a good all-around environment for families to come here. 
and it still feels like a little bit of the, the beach, um, but actually with a lot more fun toys to play on. <laughs> It is a lot of fun. People, people always rave about the lake and it's one of the things that draw them back to Ace every year. Mark Martin's in next with sports. Hi there, great to have you back with us today. Mark, the next to last set of workouts for Saturday night's WCHS TV Fox 11 North South All Star Football Classic. And one of the stars hoping to shine on Saturday night for the North is a Commodore. One of the reasons for Morgantown being in the hunt for the state championship game was running back, defensive back, Shane Commodore. We're consistently good. We never really get over that hump in the semifinals, but they're definitely on the rise, and Bowers definitely got them in the right direction. Bowers is Morgantown head coach John Bowers, a North assistant in 2013. Yeah, it's great to have like a familiar face around practice. It helps around. It helps. Commodore became the chief runner for the Mohiggans late in the season following an injury to Chazzy Thomas. He had a four touchdown breakout game in the playoffs against Huntington High. Coach kept giving me the ball. I, had, I think that game I had my most carries, but it, my linemen were doing great, so I just kept running as hard as I could. Performances such as the one against the Highlanders helped vault Commodore to North All-Star status. Uh, it's a great honor. Like, these are some of the best kids in the state down here, so it's great to be part of it. After Saturday, Commodore will continue to work, prepping to be a walk-on in his backyard as a West Virginia Mountaineer. Oh, it's, it's a great dream. It's always been, like, a great dream of mine, like, waking up in the morning on Saturdays, going to watch the Mountaineer games, and now I actually get to be a part of it. All right, and now don't forget about our special, the North-South preview, and it comes your way tomorrow evening on Fox 11 at 1130. That's it for now. More Eyewitness News in a moment. Severe weather moves out. We got drier and cooler air for tomorrow and Saturday. That's good news. Happy Father's Day there Sunday. Looks like some scattered storms will return along the warm front. Localized downpours Monday and Tuesday, but it doesn't look too bad at this time, and then cooler and drier thereafter. All right, that does it for us. Be safe out there. Take care. See you.